One of the most important applications of Dalton's law is when we go into the lab and we generate a gas and we collect that gas over water. So this will inform you of how to how that's going to affect your calculations. In Chem 1 we usually do a, a lab where we do something like this. Also in uh, Chem 2 we do it for the uh, gas stoichiometry lab. So here we have whoo, a diagram of what I'm talking about. We have a reaction in here of zinc with hydrochloric acid, a single displacement generating hydrogen bubbles. Those hydrogen bubbles would just leave, escape out into the air, but we want to collect them. So we put them into this tube, which we want to we want them to go somewhere, so we will put them into this jar. And so this jar began full of water, but as we bubbled the hydrogen gas into it, it will push the water level down and down and down. Uh, and so we'll have a container full of hydrogen gas, and that's what we mean by collecting a gas over water. So now eventually this reaction will stop. We'll stop making hydrogens. Now we're full of whatever hydrogens we have in there. And so we want to measure the pressure of that hydrogen. Well, one of the things we can do that's pretty simple is we can actually look at the atmospheric pressure in the room because the atmospheric pressure in the room is pushing down on this water level out here, causing this water to be pushed up into the chamber, up into the tube that we're collecting it in. But the reason that water can't go up any further is our gas, our hydrogen gas, is pushing down on the water. And so as long as this water level is staying stationary, then we can assume that the pressure of the atmosphere and the pressure of our sample is the same. So they're equal. But, uh, so you might just say, well, whatever the pressure of this hydrogen gas that I bubbled in here is just atmospheric pressure, easy enough. But we have a problem. If you see the label here, this says hydrogen plus water vapor. It's not only hydrogen that's pushing down this water. So we can't say that the hydrogen pressure, that the gas that we made, the hydrogen, the stuff we care about, we can't say it's equal to atmospheric pressure because there's other stuff in there. At the surface of this water, water vapor, water is evaporating. And so there are now water molecules up in this chamber which are also pushing down on the water level. And so it's actually pushing a little bit uh, harder than what just the hydrogen would push. And so um, we need to account for this. So we want to figure out what the hydrogen pressure is because that's our sample. We want to find out what it is. But we got this water also happening. But one thing we do know is that the mixture here will push down equal to atmospheric pressure. So this turns out to be a boil, uh, Dalton's Law problem. So we can say that the pressure of our hydrogen, now generally speaking, this would be whatever your sample is, the hydrogen here. With this example, you made hydrogen. But it, whatever your sample is would go here. Plus the pressure of the water vapor is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So we would read the atmospheric pressure off of a barometer. Uh, and we would uh, find the water vapor off of a table. There are actually tables for water vapor at various temperatures. And so we would need to know the temperature to do this. And so <coughs> we let's just kind of make up some examples. Let's say that the pressure, uh, what we're going to do is take the formula we just had and solve to get the uh, hydrogen pressure by subtracting off the vapor pressure. That tells us to get the hydrogen pressure, we would take the atmospheric pressure minus the vapor pressure of water, and that's how we would do it. So, um, uh, atmospheric pressure you'd get off of a barometer. This you would need to find off of a table of some sort, and I can help you do that if necessary. But remember, any kind of time you m collect a sample over water, you're going to have to do this. Take the atmospheric pressure in the room, subtract off the water vapor pressure at that temperature, and that's the actual pressure of your sample.